Hey everyone, your designers are here. I'm Anita at Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I'm Yvonne at Stone Gable. And I'm Kelly at Myself at Home. We've got tips and tricks and decorating advice for you today, so let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about the best ways to paint furniture. It's episode 140 already. Oh my. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, we're coming up on our first anniversary, the beginning of February. I know. It's going to be very exciting. We're going to have to plan mm-hmm. something. So let's uh, dive into um, painting furniture. Yay. Oh. We talk about it a lot. We We've always done say it a lot. that uh-huh. it's a great way to transform something. It's a great way to upcycle a thrifted item. And it's a wonderful way to add something unique and fresh to your mm-hmm. decor. I've not painted anything for a little while because, you know, as bloggers, we like from from mid-September through Christmas, it's just like drinking out of a fire hose. <laughs> always, yeah, pretty much. It's it's such a busy time of year for us. And I always call this, my family knows it's my busy time. Yeah. Um, but I am so in the mood to paint. I'm looking for a big old armoire that mm. I can put in our bedroom and it can become Bobby's dresser. So I can't wait to start painting. Mm, nice. Yeah, I think we've painted a lot of the thing, a lot of things over the years. I think I've oh, sold yeah. a lot of things that I've painted, but oh, there's you a few go, things. girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't have many left in my house, but we've I've spent a lot of time painting, and so between the three of us, we have quite a bit of experience. Mm-hmm. And we paint, painting. we have different sort of genres in painting mm-hmm. too, which is nice. True. But I could I start because yes. I think there's a couple things that will really help you be a good painter. Like you have to start with the basics and, you know, you want to get a piece of furniture. Don't look at what it's, what finish it has on it. You know, you want to look at, um, uh, it's curves and lines and details. And that's what you're going to buy because when you paint it, that will, that will be interesting. But when you get a piece to paint, and I would say, if you are just starting out, start small, like a mirror or a picture frame or something like that, that you could, you, so you feel confident or a small chair or a small side table um, to begin with, just so you get the feel of it. But you want to pull that, let's say you're going to do, let's say you've been painting and you're going to do a dresser. You need to take out all the drawers um, you need to take out everything. You don't want to take off the doors if the door is open and take off all the hardware. That's where you're going to begin. And then you're going to take all that hardware so if you're going to put it back on so you don't lose it. You're going to put it all together in a baggie, close it up and put it somewhere where you don't forget where it is. Don't yes. put it in your underwear drawer. Things no. get lost in there. Yeah. <laughs> Like uh, pumpkin stems. Yes. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea. I must have been rushing around to do something. But anyway, so that's how you're going to start. And I buy tarps, you know, um, painter's tarps from the hardware store. And I use them and it, I put everything on a painter's tarp. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take that furniture and using a degreaser. And my favorite is Simply Green. And it's uh, non-toxic and you're going to degrease the entire, you spray it on and you want to wipe it off with a non-lint white cloth. Like I just, I get a bunch of them. Uh, either I, I tear a bunch of like, uh, of my, I, I'm like white t-shirts, like those long sleeve t-shirt, you know, t-shirts. They're really great. And, uh, or I just have a big box of those, uh, white t-shirt type of rags that are non-lint and you want to clean it off really good, but you don't want to leave any remnants of the degreaser on it. So then you want to take a spray bottle and just go over the whole thing with water and wipe it down. It doesn't have to be any, you don't have to put a lot of elbow grease into it, but just wipe it down. Now your piece is ready to paint because you don't want any kind of dirt, grime, grease, or residue on it, it will, um, it will inhibit how well the, the paint or what you're going to put on it adheres. So that's really, really important to begin with. 
Good tips. And then, wow, nice prep. Yeah. Yeah. That's yes. your prep. And I have to say, sometimes I just run home from the thrift store and I take out the spray paint. But yeah, I was going to say, oh, these are good oh, tips, no. but we don't, I mean, Yvonne may follow all this. I don't always degrease my, it, if it looks pretty clean, I just go for it. No, mm-hmm. really you will save yourself a lot of headaches. It doesn't take yeah, you're that absolutely long. Absolutely right. This is the right it way to do it. It might take you like ten yeah. extra minutes. But I've like, never had a problem with stuff peeling oh, off either, so I've not had. Okay. Well, if this Anita. Hmm? This is the best way to do it. Oh yes, ma'am. And that's, okay, that's the way we should be. Yeah. Doing it. So it's if our you're own painting... fault if we don't do it this way, because yeah, this no, is I haven't truly had truly the right way to do it, Yvonne. Well, you. you're yeah. you're very lucky that you don't you've well, never no, had a I problem. Well, no, I use I use the chalk based paint and that is much more forgiving. Now, if you're doing latex paint, I think mm-hmm. you're going to have a much you have to be much more careful about the way you prep things. But so I'm it's telling you the prep is how much prep is needed is dependent on the paint you are using. So, if you're I'm using latex s- paint, <laughs> you're going to need more prep than if you're using chalk paint. I'm going to say yeah. Miss Anita mm-hmm. that you mm-hmm. will want to even use the degreaser on things that you chalk paint as well. Okay. I'm, well, I'm, yeah. I've never used it and I've never had a problem. Okay. Um, <laughs> just just throwing that out there. But that's I'm sure that's, but that would be better to use my, it. The two big, Amy Howard and Annie Sloan, both say you should degrease. So I'm going to do what they say. Anyway, okay, sure. let me I'm just gonna, tell you Yvonne, this. I'm going to do what you say. Okay, thank you. Anita can just. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, but and you've already been in the don't. You don't do it though, Kelly. No, and, but From I know it, I know I'm wrong, and I know I'm rushing. Oh, <laughs> I know okay. I'm going to rue the day. Rue the day. That. Well, and if you're using latex paint, you're going to have to prime it as well. Well, let me. We're not there yet. Oh, we're not. Because, surprised. Oh my goodness, this is taking way too yeah. long. No, no. no this, here's the this thing. Will... Here's the thing. When you have painters at your house, and we all know this, if they don't spend almost two thirds of their time in prep. And cleaning then up. you don't have good painters, right? So it yeah. is well, all that's because about they're taping, the Right, but mostly they're taping. Yeah, no, that's true. But that's latex paint usually. And they're Can she just taping. not agree for a second? Yvonne, you've, got to tape, you've got to tape everything. <laughs> well, what they're doing is taping everything off is what they spend so much well, time let doing me in just, my house. Let me tell you another prep that will really help mm-hmm. you. And I learned this because I did oil painting, acrylic painting. I... I I used to be a painter. I used to love to paint pictures and do things like that. So I learned when I was learning how to paint that you have, you know, just get yourself a, uh, a horizontal surface. And I have like a little, um, a little table, you know, that's collapsible and just like one of those little utility tables, cover it with, um, a drop cloth and you want to, you want to place all of your tools on it. Like you want to put your paint on it and you want to put your brushes. Now I use lint free paper towels. I think they're, I think that absolutely is a must. Now I think that, I mean, maybe that's going a little overboard, but then I like double layer some paper towels and put all my brushes on it. And then I have a place for my bucket of water and I have a place for like my rags. So 15 minutes in, you can find all of your tools. You always put them back where you got them. And it's, I just don't like to be disorganized and have, because if I do that in 15 minutes, it'll look like the paint bomb blew up on that, on my prep table. So I just make sure I keep everything nice and neat and put everything back where it goes. That way I can find everything and I just, it feels better. But here's, I'm going to tell you one more, really, this will be the best tip that you get all day. So get your wow. bell out. <laughs> I'm going to tell you already. I'll be the judge of that. I'm going to tell you this already. I have no vote now. And it, <laughs> she's and, bossy. She's got the bell. I'm just standing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You can you can chime in. You ha, can get ha, your ha, own ha, bell. Ha, 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 ha. I'm okay. gonna get a giant giant bell. You get a big. I'm bell, gonna honey. get one of those teachers' bells that clang clang. I, clang Yvonne's clang. gonna go to uh to Philadelphia and stand in front of the Liberty Bell. <laughs> that's and I could yes. Uh, well, that I mean, bell probably would be arrested. I don't know how well it's okay. gonna work. It has a patina. Yeah. But this is the it best does. painting tip you will ever get. And actually, okay, I have a lean post, in, lean in. I, I'm I have, have a post called. The best painting tip you'd ever get. You want to do a practice board. And a practice board is I I go to the hardware store and I get a piece of ornate trim. And I have them cut it 
in about six inch um, pieces. So you have uh-huh. a bunch of them. And then depending the tech, I mean, if you're just going to You get paid paint, by the hour to paint for people? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this takes no time at all. But let's say, well, let's I'm say. I'm already done painting my piece. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> Anita, is Anita, that's not true. You know this because you and I went to Memphis. Oh, to stop study- it now rubbing that in my face again. <laughs> to study under a great painter. To study under... <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci. No, I'm serious. <laughs> I didn't I mean, know she's... we lived in Memphis. No. Okay. Now, Amy is the Leonardo da Vinci of the chalk world. But anyway, listen. <laughs> she you want to get at that. a board. Yes. Or, or, I mean, do it on something of raw wood. I don't care what you do, but just do this. And if you're going to do anything other than just paint it plain, you want to paint that board so you can see how it's going to look. Because nothing... Is I mean, like if you're going to do an antiquing, you paint, you paint the color, you find the antiquing you want, you paint it. Because if you hate it, guess what? You've painted a whole piece you hate. Okay, well now that explanation took 20 minutes, but I'm going to give her the the bell on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to give her the bell. <laughs> oh, wait, it's not loud enough. Oh, there, there you go. go. Thank okay. you. No, I think and get in the habit. But Anita's a leaper. And I don't know if she's going to be able to do all this, but I think she's going to try now because these are excellent tips and this mm-hmm. is the way it should be done this okay. is the way it should be done but paint use that make a make a practice board because you can even take tape and cut it in half and like let's say how like how heavy do i really want to antique something mm. and you could do half of the board light and half of the board dark and so you can really see oh i like this better and you want to take it and put it put it with your furniture you're going to put it in oh it looks best this way or i'm gonna am i do Mm -hmm. i want to antique or do i want to lime you know those you just don't want to do it on a piece especially the bigger the piece is the more you have to paint the more expensive your paint gets Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60 DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 
and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. All right. Well, I've told you the easy steps and they are easy to do start your painting right. So I'm going to let you girls talk about how, what kinds of paints you use and the best things to use. Okay. Anita, would you like to jump in there? Well, I think we both use a lot of chalk-based paint and love that, love using that. It's so great Mm -hmm. for any kind of an antiqued finish. You can wear it off, you can sand it off. And I'm sure most people know that it works so well. It has a very chalky finish. And so it really takes a wax coating very well. So you can use that to antique it. Whereas if you have a latex paint on, especially in a semi-gloss, it's much harder to do any kind of antiquing or any wax finishes. And Yvonne talked about a very ornate piece of wood that she likes to use as her practice board. So if your piece of wood or if the thing that you're painting, your furniture rather, has some ornate carving on it, it's wonderful to use some antiquing or liming waxes, tinted waxes, to really bring that out. And it goes in the crevices. And then as you buff it, it's not on the high places. So it really highlights any kind of uh, carved pieces on there. So I love to use, that's probably my, eh, one of my favorites. I mean, actually my favorite. That's like your go-to. Well, my favorite actually Mm -hmm. is milk paint because milk paint. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, milk paint actually, I think has a more authentic look as far as antiquing. So that's my favorite, but the chalk-based paints are my second favorite. Can I just, let me just jump in here. I use chalk paints almost exclusively because I like the way, there's so many looks you can get with them. Um, And my very favorite is Amy Howard, hands down. Mm -hmm. And you can get them at Ace Hardware, so you don't have to order them. So they're as close as your um, Ace Hardware. But also, let me tell you, go onto YouTube, find her channel, Amy Howard at Home. And she has dozens of really fabulous video step by step she'll show you how to do everything and she also does facebook lives well the thing i like about her line of products is it's not just the chalk based paints she's got the milk mm-hmm. paints she has the lacquer wax waxes she has lacquer paint she has mm-hmm. antiquing glaze she has kind of something that mimics i think it's called dust of ages it mimics that's old my dust fave oh i love that things. and my favorite favorite Just keep product. that off your face yeah <laughs> don't put it on there and then she also has gold leaf that you yeah. can use gold which- silver and copper leaf i believe mm-hmm. Yes, all yeah. But also she has the finishes for antiquing mirrors and turning a which is a little past what we're talking about our topic today, but also taking a stainless steel tabletop and giving it a, a look like zinc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She She's just has so cool many stuff. definitely. Yeah, she does, but if we're just talking about paint and you want something easy, you can go get her um waxes, her antiquing um, waxes and her one step paint, which is chalk paint. Okay. Right at your ACE hardware. So let's step back. So if you're using okay. chalk paint, whatever kind of chalk paint you're going to use, um, my understanding is chalk paint, you don't necessarily need to use a primer. Is that correct? You don't yes. use a primer. Exactly. Okay. So no primer. That's nice. That that's why that yeah, stuff out. it's one step. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then since both of you, I have chalk painted, but not to the extent that you guys have. So when you chalk paint, do you always need to put one of these wax finishes on or you can just leave it as it is? You can leave it as it is. Okay. If you like that. Uh, mm-hmm. I th- well, I mean, it really depends on how you're going to use the piece. So mm-hmm. I usually, well, I, I mean, I think can. that she recommends putting wax on you, and I yes, certainly- Yes, but you, but you can I leave always it just put a wax as it on. is. I like the look of a wax on it. So I always do. Now, is the wax something where if you put a glass or something- on the it, wax it is going to protect the finish a lot better. It's not going to be mm-hmm. as watertight without the wax. Okay. Oh, absolutely. But you can leave it. Okay. 
So maybe if it was a little accent piece or a lamp or something like that, you wouldn't have to wax it. But if it was something where someone could put a glass on top of it or well, it was going to get dinged, you should but also recommend it depends a wax. On, also, it depends on the kind of finish you want. So mm-hmm. it's not just for protection, but what kind of look you want. So a lot of times when you use chalk-based paint, you want to add a wax to get a particular look and patina. So yeah, that's okay. another reason. And here's the other thing. You cannot use it outside. Now, I painted no, my I, swing. I well, yeah. you're not supposed to use I've, wax. Again, wax, I've heard the wax. that. I've heard that, but I've because done it, it and melt. I've had no problem. No, now, no problem. I painted my swing just using the uh, the um, uh, chalk paint, and it's fine. I've also used two planters that I've had outside that I aged using wax paint without any, without any, I mean, uh, chalk paint without using any wax and they are just fine, but they recommend because the wax can sort of get soft and melt. And then if you sit on something, you have a problem. Okay. Let me just throw out a little, uh, I don't, maybe devil's advocate, maybe just a question. Mm-hmm. If you're doing the chalk paint and just particularly if you're painting something like a planter or something like that, that's going to be outside. Now, what's the advantage of, of using the chalk paint with presumably a brush and all that, as opposed to just spray painting it in a matte finish, which I would think would get pretty close to the chalk. If it's going to be in the weather, I'm personally, I would not use chalk paint. Okay. Personally, I wouldn't. Well, my urns, I wanted them to look very old Mm -hmm. and weathered so I can go over the base coat with, with, um, shading and highlighting to give it that very old. And you can go online. It's just how to age an urn. And I have all that in there. Um, it, it is not out. It's not out. I mean, it's under a porch. Okay. So I don't have it out. Like, yeah. so it could ha- be okay. in the elements. Yeah. So and that's I, different. You have a yeah. post on that. We can add that to the yes. show notes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm some other things that, you know, we've talked about using a lacquered spray paint. I think that's another mm-hmm. very interesting look that you can use. And it's a very contemporary look. Yeah. It's I mean, that gorgeous. is gorgeous. The bl- a black or, I mean, you know, if you had a bold enough look, you could go even with a red. So fun. Bright Ugh. yellow. I think it's chic. Yeah. So, I mean, mm-hmm. a spray paint is obviously can be the easiest paint. Mm-hmm. Oh, use. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there are so many types. And, I, you know, I would say, I know I'm not the queen of everything. Yvonne's the queen of everything. <laughs> no. I, I no. might have the spray paint crown because I do it a lot. In fact, I just spray painted um, a mossy deer gold the other day. Um, there you go. <laughs> it, um, spray paint is so easy to use. I really love it. I, I want to explore um, using so do you use paint a some more. Do you use a degreaser before you use it? Uh, my reindeer was not greasy. I did not degrease him. <laughs> I shaved him. No. Um, it was hard to make him stand still, but I did it. No. Um, I want to explore chalk paint. That's why I have a lot of questions about that. But I, as far if we want to jump in here, I know we we're already at 26 minutes and go on to another type of paint. Let me jump in with spray paint. Mm-hmm. There are so many different kinds of fantastic spray paints now. And and sometimes people say, oh, but it didn't really work or it didn't hold. You have to really look at the type of surface that the spray paint is designed for. There mm-hmm. are some that are for plastic. There are some that are metal. There are some which I would stay away from with the primer and the color to combine. That's like shampoo and conditioner. You're never going to be happy. <laughs> Just yeah. don't do it, you know? Yeah. So it's good to prime if it's a piece that uh, has a lot of wear on it already and something that's going to get a lot, uh, it's a lot of touching or a lot of use or, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of things being put on top of it. So never hurts to prime and really doesn't take a lot of time at all. Can I Uh, ask you a question about that? Mm -hmm. Would you, when you spray paint something, do you, or, or like when you prime it and then spray paint it, if it has like a little bit of rust on it and stuff, do you sand that all off? I usually don't because I really like something usually that has a little bit of the patina to it. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. if it's kind of riddled with, uh, you know, almost like blistery rust, yes. you could go mm-hmm. over it a little bit, mm-hmm. maybe with steel wool or something like that to pr- to bring it down a little okay. bit. Um, I am so enamored of the flat 
matte spray paint now. I've been spraying mm. a lot of things that I do spray paint things gold a lot. Um, they have chalk spray paint now. It's a chalk mm-hmm. based spray paint. You, yeah. I guess you can't call it spray paint, uh, chalk paint, but they definitely have that on the market. So you're getting that kind of look. Um, but you know, it is spray paint is a little bit different to work with. And I have not tried a chalk based spray paint with any type of wax over it. So I'm not sure how that would look, but I'm, mm-hmm. I, I mean, that might be they even have, have to chalkboard. Give it a paint. Yeah. And then we should note that chalkboard paint is very different than chalk paint. So that, well, those are two different things. But chalk paint, now I know, I don't know about all chalk paints, but I do know about Amy's. If you don't put a wax over it, it is a chalkboard paint. You could use it for that. Yeah. Yes, you could. Mm-hmm. Um, So spray painting, I think is just a, is such a quick, easy way to mm-hmm. transform something. Um, and can I, would, I just say mm-hmm. this? If you have, like, let's say you have a vase and it's a really ugly color or it has a a design on it you don't like, you can spray paint that and it will look totally new. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you you know, if you want, if you like white, Mm -hmm. spray paint it white. And you can also gold leaf part of that on top yeah. of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like if I mm-hmm. collect all those little white pictures and I have in the yes, past. Yes, yes. If I saw, I saw a little red one or green one that I really like the shape of, you can spray paint it. I wouldn't put that close up with my other ones where you could see this difference. But if you're putting it on a shelf where it's further away, you're just getting the visual of it being white. You could for sure do that. Um, you could spray paint lamps. If you think your lamp is dated, you know, it, it has that... Tuscan bronze thing going on, but you like the shape of it, mm-hmm. spray paint it a color. Absolutely. My uh, number one tip with regard to spray paint is buy two or three cans more than you think you need. Oh, good point. <laughs> Excellent point. Because you, you can, can always take it back. You can always take it back mm-hmm. or you'll find something else to spray paint to, uh, that use that can of spray paint for, but it does run out fairly quickly. And when you run out, you don't want to not be able to find any more. You can exactly. need it to finish your project. You want to finish your project. And tell me how many coats of spray paint you usually put on something, Kelly. Well, when you're working with the spray paint, um, it seems to me... I, that I don't know if it's that it soaks in or your eye sort of look you, when you're spraying it, your eye thinks you're sort of done. And then you have to, get, when you come back, you think, Oh my gosh, really? Like it's not done at all. I missed all these spaces. So I go back several times. It's usually something if I'm going to do a um, mid-sized item, I'll maybe start in the morning, give it a good spray, then an hour or so later, come back. And then you have to turn it over and work around. So, you know, it could take several hours to get all the spots because you can't spray it and then flip it but over. But you're not active that whole time. You can do something else. Oh, yeah. Back. You spray mm-hmm. it. It takes three mm-hmm. minutes and you run and you go decorate your Christmas tree mm-hmm. and you run back mm-hmm. and you spray it again. <laughs> and then Speaking you flip of the deer Christmas over. Trees, wouldn't yeah. lacquered Christmas tree balls with spray paint. So if you've got a bunch of colors that you're just not going to use anymore, right. wouldn't that be gorgeous? Oh, that's a oh, great yeah. idea. Or metallic paint on them. Oh, yeah. Well, I bet you could idea. spray a whole tree. I bet I'll you bet could. Somebody ha- I bet a blogger somewhere has. Oh, yeah. Because if you had a tree that was kind of not let's just say not a balsam hill quality tree, you know, not a tree classics quality tree, right. a tree that maybe looked faux, but, it, and it was green. Um, I bet if you, f- I would fluff it all, you know, really well. So everything is spread out and all the needles and it, c- it was probably take you a lot of cans of spray paint and it would take you a lot of time. That but would be I bet some you project. Could make that, that would be a white big project mm-hmm. to get all the surfaces. Yeah. yeah. But a cute idea. Maybe a smaller one wouldn't be so much work. But, you know, that's actually a darling idea. Here, um, yeah. To the- so maybe Talking. everyone look for a cheapo tree like at um, CVS or Rite Aid after the season and spray mm-hmm. it. Um, well, I want to go back to the mm-hmm. chalk, chalk base paint sure. for a minute. And mention that you can actually paint fabric with this. I oh. painted chairs, the whole thing, the fabric seat and the mm-hmm. wood legs, the same color. And it looked great. And if you use a clear wax over that, it takes on a leather quality. It's yes. It, beautiful. It, the fabric is going to look leathery. Wow. After it's painted. Okay. So, and when someone sits on, or are you not allowed to sit on it or do you? No, know it, no, no. Once the wax dries, you're fine. And it's waterproof. Mm-hmm. Right, the wax waterproofs it, wow. so that's an option. So the paint underneath doesn't crack at all when you people. No, it. I didn't have that problem. It's pliable. You have like, no problems. I don't have any problems painting, darling. <laughs> no prep, no problem. No. <laughs> then that should be a song. 
No prep. One no other. Prep. I think that is a there is Western song. I'm sure <laughs> yeah, there's. there is one. I think and it's no shirt, no shoes, no problem. No problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is it. Uh, and one other wax I want to mention is the use of liming wax, which is a white mm. wax, which is also beautiful and it has kind of an antique feel to it. So, so that's a that's a real favorite of mine. Well, Ooh, you yeah. know what's what? Why liming wax is so awesome? If you have golden oak pieces that you just you like the shape of it, but you're just tired of it. You can put a liming wax on that and it takes on a whole new, beautiful, updated look. Inevitably, with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt go ahead clean out your closet then head straight to quince i love every item quince offers from wardrobe to decor and i can really recommend their ultra stretch super wide leg pants at 49.90 the price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering it keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom everything feels right with quince the price the quality and the sustainability quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach and like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. My experience with that is if it's got a sealer on the wood, it doesn't take the wax. But if no, it's, no, if it's yeah, you have so you do have mm-hmm. to remove. So if that. it just is stained, right? If it's like a stained piece, like mm-hmm. I'm thinking of, like you know those oak armoires you can buy or the pine armoires. Right. Oh, and I have a um, a piece in my my um, family room that's um, it's stained, but it doesn't have a um, a protector over it. And I'm always so tempted to lime it. So yeah, I what picture I w- pine when I, I think of that liming wax. Right. So if you're putting wax on a piece of furniture and the wax is, is when you wipe the wax, it comes completely off and it's not being absorbed into the wood at all. That means there's a poly coat or some other coat on the mm-hmm. wood. And if you want to use a wax mm-hmm. on it, you will have to use a stripping agent mm-hmm. to get that off. And stripping is a whole ball of wax, (laughs) a whole different ball of wax. I think stripping's a mess. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing that. I'd rather that anymore. I'd rather chalk paint it. Mm -mm. Nope, not going there again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know you strip paint. You strip things, though, don't you, Kelly? Uh, I was going to say you strip Kelly, but I thought (laughs) that didn't sound so good. Well, you know, that was just that summer. No, (laughs) I. No, I have tried that and it's really 
challenging. And the, just th- thinking of all those chemicals that, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just oh, it's so terrible. toxic. But I have, I really want to, to strip the top of that altar that I took out of my house. But mm-hmm. I, now that it's on, on the wall and the guy was like, I'm ready. My brother's here with me. We can do it today. I was like, okay, let's put it up. <laughs> I was going to be like, well, I think I'm going to buy a stripper and, you know, and, uh, maybe. So we just put it on the wall. So there's no way I'm going to strip that now. I would say if you want to try stripping and you really love, I do love that look of the really raw wood. If you Mm -hmm. want to do something like that, try it on a small piece and please get yourself those masks. I was just going to say that. that. Do it in a well ventilated area. Yep. Because that is really bad for you. And don't get mm-hmm. touch your eye. Don't brush your hair oh, out of your yes. your face. You could get it in your eye. Just bad, bad, bad. There are places I know my upholsterer, if I wanted some chairs stripped that he was also going to upholster, they send it to some, I don't know, I'm picturing some giant vat of stripping, mm-hmm. you know, some mm-hmm. horrible, you know, fumes coming out of this, but they'll not good dip for the, the wood, entire though. piece. The dipping is not good for the wood. Well, here, here's what I was going to say. Uh, um, Kelly, but finish your thing first, and then I'm going to talk about something that's not good for the wood that I'm dying to do. Okay, so that, yeah, well, Anita <laughs> says it's not good for the wood, but yeah, you could have someone, I mean, there are... If you have a good upholsterer that has access to a place like my that. mother's had a few things stripped over her decor lifetime mm-hmm. and they've been fine. Yeah. Well, here's what I'm dying to do. And it's really, I don't, I don't know the technique other than painting all my floors white um, is bleaching wood. Oh yes. I'm dying to do that and it really messes up the surface of your wood which makes it so incredibly beautiful okay but if you're bleaching you 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 would have to if you had a poly some sort of coating on. oh no you strip Mm -hmm. the whole thing that's gotta be stripped first well stripping it to the you know she's not doing that poor bobby (laughs) (laughs) yeah my, my lovely assistant um and I just on the don't side, light a I, match. On, I know, Bobby, on the, this is a side note. I had a dinner party last night, and I was so exhausted because I'm still in an air cast, believe it or not. And um, I was so exhausted. I went to bed. I got up this morning, and the dish, everything was done. Oh, what a he, jewel! Uh, he is a jewel, isn't that sweet? He but anyway, um, okay, let's you, jump over to. Well, can uh, I just talk about? Oh yeah, I'm for sorry, a sweetheart. Mm-hmm. You bleed. I've seen it done. And if you like a distressed wood with a, just the natural wood, it, it, now I wouldn't use it on a cherry piece or a mahogany because it would come out sort of pink, but you want to, I'm thinking of like a, either a walnut or an oak and it, I've seen a couple pieces. They, uh, they make my heart pitter pat. Now, if is you it know how to do this, like write to us. Clorox? Or- I, I have heard that's how you can do that's it. That's how I have heard as well. And I'm, uh, I've got to do it this year. I mean, I probably will have to wear one of those masks with the breathing it a thing attached yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. But I I just I have to do it. It's they're so beautiful. Okay. When you do it, then tell me and we'll add it back to, into the show notes so people can okay. see. How about Anita had mentioned milk paint. Now we know our friend Marion, Miss mm-hmm. Mustard Seed. She has a fabulous line of gorgeous colored milk paints. And now I have used it once or twice on small items. Um I have never done a big piece of furniture. I I have a Pinterest board that is all about sort of interesting pieces of furniture. And I think, you know, she is predominantly uh, seen on that board because she does such an amazing job with the colors and then also adding maybe some sort of stenciling and things like that. And she just seems to pick the exact right piece of furniture Mm -hmm. for the color milk paint. Mm -hmm. So just so we can talk about milk paint, it comes powdered. It's a dry product Mm -hmm. that you add water Water to. to. And so then you not can milk, it, you add water. To right. Because it. it's already like dried powdered milk with pigment in it. Mm-hmm. And then you're adding the water. And then she, and she also has a lot of videos to show you how to use it and how much water to, based on the amount of saturation of the color that you want and all of that. But now, don't you have to use that on raw wood? I don't know. I'm asking. I, I did on a small project use on a raw wood. And then I, I used it on wood, but that had not had a... Um, any sort of 
lacquer coating on top of it. You know, oh, no yeah, okay. I've used coating. it on non. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've used it. Did on it look nice? Candlesticks too. I bet it looked nice. My mine looked great. You oh, yeah. used I'm, it on I'm brass no problem over here. Yeah, it's just yeah, no it's, problem. It, look, no if you problem. want anything painted, we could have just uh, in the first five minutes just said send everything to Anita. And it'd then, be done by now. It'd be done by now. <laughs> now, Anita, you said you enjoy milk paint more. Then mm-hmm. chalk paint? Did, is that what? Yes. I, yes. Okay. Now, oh. why is that? Because oh. I think it has a more authentic look. It looks more like an antiqued piece of furniture, the way it distresses. Ah. And I mean, I think it has a, a, almost a rustic antique look. Now, I know like if you want to do a Toscana look or or something a little more involved, like an Italian um, antique look. You can really. Did you get just say that. Tuscan in Italian? Toscana. Toscana. <laughs> well, Toscana is. It is not. Is Amy Howard's milk paint is called Toscana? That's I what see. she's talking okay. about. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it has a lot of. It has a lot of. There's other steps to it that make it more like a very highbrow antique. Mm-hmm. But I think that is yeah, a, they both have very different looks. Yes, but a very authentic. That milk paint is gorgeous and i think it's just a really fun thing to try and it's a technique and you know what what's really fun about painting a project uh, whether it be small medium or even a large project is you kind of can lose yourself in it a little bit like i love i like i think that's one of the reasons i like painting things um because you know you can put in your earbuds and you can listen to decorating tips and tricks or you can just hear the birds or whatever you're doing but you can you're focusing on that one thing and it's really kind of a nice project to have going on and if you can have a space in your garage or in your basement to do something like that it's kind of fun and it'd be fun if you haven't tried any of these techniques to sort of uh, excuse the pun but dip in and <laughs> give it a whirl so we were to dip your paint to do that mm-hmm. i have one really cheapo um easy way to use up extra paint that you might have laying around okay this will be the last thing yeah this can be a um like a water-based a takeaway. lacquered paint that you have i did a post mm-hmm. on it when i first started blogging i had this little um it was wooden but like a garden stool and i, mm-hmm. I remember i got it from wisteria and i I don't, I guess I put it online, but I didn't really see that it had these kind of weird dragons on it. And I didn't really like it when I came, but I didn't want to send it back. But it's like, okay, so what am I going to do with it? So I decided to paint it. And so I had some paint left over from a wall paint. And so I just took a dry rag Mm -hmm. and I just sort of rubbed it. And so I just used up this little bit of maybe an inch and a half of paint in a gallon and I just rubbed it on and it really got this great distressed finish. So I used a dried rag, like a t-shirt rag Mm -hmm. and not a paintbrush, super easy, didn't have to buy anything, didn't need to run to the the hardware store or anything. It's just what I had left around. So basically you dry brushed it using a rag. Dry brushed it. That's very creative. um, Yeah. You know, uh, just a plain Mm -hmm. old latex paint that I had Mm -hmm. hanging around. Oh, what a good idea. So I'll put the post link in for that. We just have, we, as you can tell, we all love to paint furniture and paint anything we can get our hands on. And there's so many wonderful creative ways that you can paint. Go to uh, YouTube. They, it's loaded with um, a lot of uh, paint techniques and they'll teach you how to do almost anything. And we love you listening and we're so glad you're here today and Uh, We just want to remind you that we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Hey, everybody. We want to thank you so much for listening to Decorating Tips and Tricks. And we want to make it even easier for you to listen. And it's easier if you subscribe. You just click the subscribe button on our website, www dot decorating tips and tricks dot com or you can subscribe through Apple Podcast or any of your favorite podcast listeners. When you subscribe, DTT comes free right to you three days a week. So until next time. <laughs>